Okay, um, we're going to continue our videos now on developing a more general permutation formula. If you remember from the last video, we got some practice um, using factorials because we're going to use more factorial expressions now. We want to be comfortable working with them. Um, which, by the way, that brings up a point. If you're finding our videos on YouTube, they might be kind of shotgunned all over the place. And there's sort of a logical sequence that we're trying to present these problems in. So if you go to digitaluniversity.org, there you will find all the videos uh, in their proper sequence. And in fact, at the uh, website address, you see there's also hundreds more problem-solving videos and a whole variety of uh, different categories. So if you go to the website, it might be more helpful for you rather than just hunting around on YouTube. Okay. What we want to do in this video is consider this kind of a problem. Say that we have 15 distinct objects. And out of that 15 distinct objects, we're going to select, say, four objects. Now, as before, the order in which the objects appear after we do our selection, the order is very important, and there is no replacement. Once we select an object, that's it. It's not there to be used anymore. So no replacement. So how many different ways can we select these four different objects? Well, for this specific problem, we can use the, uh, the general counting principle to get our answer, because we have four tasks to perform. First one, of course, is just select the first object. And when we select that first object, we've got 15 to choose from. So to perform our first task, that can be done in 15 different ways. The next task, T2, is to select the second object, now, when we do this, one of the objects from here in the group of 15 is missing. So to perform task T2, we have 14 objects to choose from. So there's 14 different ways of performing task T2. And for task T3, to select our third object, two objects now have already been selected. So now we have 13 objects to choose from. So there's 13 different ways that we can do task number three. And for task number four, now three objects have already been chosen from the 15. They're gone. That leaves 12 remaining objects. So there's 12 different ways that we can perform task T4. So when we ask the question, how many different ways can we select four different objects? What we're asking ourselves is, if we perform task T1, T2, T3, and T4, what is the total number of ways we can do that? And we know from the fundamental counting principle, that's going to be 15 times 14 times 13 times 12. So here, this problem we've written out here, we're going to symbolize it like this. Say we have P 15 4, meaning we have 15 distinct objects. We're going to select four of them. There is no replacement. And that is equal to 15 times 14 times 13 times 12. Now notice this number here is equal to 15 minus 4 plus 1. So, in general, if we have this kind of a problem, just to generalize this, so we have n distinct objects, we're going to choose k of them, k is less than n, obviously. How many different ways can we do that? Well, 
the general form of that is then let's just make some room we know that when we had 15 objects and we we're selecting four of them that is equal to 15 times 14 times 13 times 12 we know that this last number is 15 minus 4 plus 1 so now if we have this and number of objects and we're going to select k of them that will be equal to n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times n minus 3 and the last number will be n minus k like it was here plus 1 like this and this then would be the general formula for selecting k number of objects from n number of distinct objects and we only we only, make one, we only select one object one time there is no replacement so that would be the general formula now let's look at this each one of these of course is a number that decreases by one as we go along in the series well suppose we ask ourselves all right well this is our general formula but suppose we continued along here following this pattern what would the next number be well each of these numbers decreases by one as we can see so if we were to ask ourselves as just sort of a thought experiment what would be the next number that would occur that would of course would be just n minus k And the next number that would appear after that, if we continue following the pattern, that would be n minus k minus 1. Or as we noted in the previous video, this can be written as n minus k plus 1. And we put the parentheses around it. So either this way or this way, if we were continuing the pattern here, this would be the next number. Continuing the pattern, the next number would be n minus k plus 2 times n minus k plus 3. Continuing along to finally we would get to 3 times 2 times 1. And let's write this the way that we wrote these terms here just to be consistent. So this would be written like this n minus k plus 1 like this. So we're noting now that this is the formula for this kind of a problem. We notice that in the formula there's a pattern. Each number just decreases by one. And we just ask ourselves out of curiosity, if we continue along with the pattern, what would happen? What would be the next number that we would have? It would be this, the next number, the next number, the next number. Well of course this, this expression divided by itself is just 1. Like this. And so forth.
Okay, well, what would happen if we took our general formula, this, and multiply it by 1, specifically this? What would the numerator be? Well, we're starting with n. We're going to here. The next term is 1 less than that. And it continues all the way along until we get to 3 times 2 times 1. So the numerator would just be n factorial. So we'd have this expression. For the numerator, it is n factorial. And the denominator, we're multiplying with this by this. The denominator is this. This is just n minus k factorial, as we noted in the previous video. So our general formula here by multiplying it by 1, specifically this, gives us this formula. Like that. And again, the way we obtained that was, we looked at this, it was easy to recognize as a pattern here, we just continued on with the pattern, and that gave us this sequence, we divided it by itself to give us 1, and we just multiplied our general formula by 1. And the numerator has, we'll have this times this. And the entire thing is divided by this part, the denominator. Well, this here, starting with n, decreasing by 1 until we get to 3 times 2 times 1, is n factorial. The denominator, as we know in the previous video, is just n minus k. Each number decreases by 1 until we get to 3 times 2 times 1. That's n minus k factorial. So there's our general expression. So if we have n number of distinct objects, and we take out k of them without replacement, this here then would tell us the number of ways that we can do that. So for example, if we had, as we did earlier, 15, 4, this would be equal to 15 factorial divided by 11 factorial. And this equals 15 times 14 times 13 times 12 times 11 factorial. That's this divided by 11 factorial which is the same answer that we got er earlier using the general counting principle. So this then becomes our general permutation formula. I think we're going to run out of time, so come back, join us in the next video, and we'll continue working with this.